Hey everybody, Karen Bryan here. I've got Josh Quinlan kicking back with me. He's fighting Danny Barlow at UFC 298. And uh, listen, Josh, obviously it's a big deal whenever you're on a pay-per-view. Um, what do you make of this matchup? How psyched are you to get in the octagon? I'm really excited. This is a great card and I'm glad to be part of it. Uh, the UFC is always putting on a good event. I'm glad that it's uh, outside of Las Vegas so I can just uh, get out of town and focus on the task at hand. Danny Barlow is a great fighter. He's a prospect coming up in the rankings. So um, I'm looking forward to welcoming, to, wel welcoming him to the UFC. So, yeah, that's uh, a couple things you mentioned there. So you are a Vegas-based uh, fighter in general, right? Yes. Yeah. So is it uh, Vanderlei's team that you fight with or no? I fight um, out of Vanderlei Silva's gym. Um, and they rebranded re it to Milestone Martial Arts, yeah. but still the same coaches, still the same aura, <clears throat> still the same aura, and uh, yeah, I represent Vandalay and uh, the roots that he brings. Okay, because that's what I was wondering about. Because yeah, when I first started covering uh, the sport, Vanderlei was a big deal. And the gym in Vegas was a big deal. Like, I remember going there and filming all kinds of stuff. Like, if I look back on my channel, I have a, a bunch of cool stuff there. Um, and there is a real spirit to, obviously, the way <clears throat> Vanderlei fights and fought and all of that. So how do you, like, what does that mentality mean to you? What does that mean to you to be, a, like, a Vanderlei guy? Yeah, I was able to enter Vandalay Silva's gym when he was still competing and um, got to um, gotta introduce myself to him and get to know him, not not on a deep ha um, deep level, but um, a really nice guy. He, he's a uh, polar opposite of what he's in, in, what he does in the cage. You know, he's a killer in the cage, nicknamed the Axe Murderer. But man, when you meet him in person, just the nicest guy and uh, really care, cares about you, really kind. Um, I wasn't the only one, um, I wasn't the only one fighting at uh, training at Vandalay Silva's gym at the time. Uh, Khalil Rontree was um, one of the guys that was, um, I, I saw him get, come up from the amateur ranks. I, he was somebody I looked up to and yeah. to see him have his success, it uh, inspires me to do my best as well. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's so, right? Like this, like back in the yeah. day, this is all you needed to see, and you were like, oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. It's that, that, that's there. Yeah. But you're right. He's such a funny guy. I have a really funny um, video with him, and people should look like, where he told the story of a guy on an airplane fighting for the armrest. Uh, <laughs> and let's just say, Josh, like the dude had no idea what he was up against. And it was like, you're really going to fight Vanderlei Silva for an arm? Like, it's, it's a funny, funny story. It's, yeah, I'll have to share. It's a funny story. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay, so, so let's talk about this, though. You've had your, your one and one in the UFC, right? So far? Yes. yes. Um, so what, it, what went right the, the time <clears> it went <throat> right? And what went wrong the time it didn't go your way? The, the same mentality was going to each fight. Um, I just had a, a late last minute switch up on my opponent. I wasn't able to game plan the right way. And um, he exposed some weaknesses that were in my game. Uh, I really commend Trey Waters for his, his skill level his, as a martial artist and uh, the way he carries himself. But um, it allowed me to work on the things that I needed to work on. And I believe that's, that, that's part of life. You, you get faced with adversity and you get faced with certain situations and it's your job to adapt. And that's uh, something I'm bringing with me into my next fight. Um, the, the ability to work on and grow from my mistakes, as well as being a little more adaptable to the situations that come and uh, switching up the rhythm when necessary. Yeah, I mean, I guess that some of that is just what comes with experience, right? Uh, understanding where you are in a fight, understanding when the momentum is going, when you can change it, where, you know, and like you just said, being able to make adjustments on the fly, right? Some of that stuff just comes yes. with having more experience in there. Yes, very much so. Uh, I'm glad I went through that experience and uh, I'd rather it earlier in my career than later on in my career. That's uh, was a little more, if it's a little more prominent, you know, I um I worked hard on the things I had to <clears throat> the things I had to get better at, and uh, looking forward to showing a different fighter this upcoming fight. So you also there was a no contest after contender series, right? 
of the contender series was the no contest. Was was the no contest. So what what happened with that? And that was a fight that you won, but then it was later overturned, right? So what exactly? Happened yes. So uh, through that fight, I uh, trained trained hard for it. Uh, dedicated myself to the fight camp. I was able to get that victory. But um, through the drug test, uh, the athletic commission deemed me that to have a in, in a illegal substance in my urine. It was a uh, anabolic steroid, mm -hmm. and it was early in my career. I, I knew, you know, decisions that I've made that um, you know I thought that would maybe think that I needed to depend on those things. But um, just mistakes that we make in the past. Uh, I. I accept full responsibility of it and um, looking forward to just being better, making better decisions and being the martial artist, being professional, being a professional and being a martial artist that is able to just uh, dedicate himself and make the right decisions. It's it's good that you take ownership of that kind of stuff, right? And you and you know, yeah, made a mistake. You're a young fighter. I feel like, you know, it's certainly not you're not alone in that, right? So um, it's nice, like you said, to just kind of deal with it, process it, accept it, and move on. Yes, I'm glad I can be um, better better about it and more professional in the approach that I take with my career. And um, that's something that um, I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice. Uh, I'm willing to dedicate myself and not look for the unnecessary edges that people think that that gives you. And I'm looking to operate in my own my own free will, my own power, and continue to be uh, a good good professional and a good example of uh, a hard worker. Yeah, I love that because also at the end of the day too, anyway, yeah. Josh, like you're going to feel better about it if you won, if you won, you know what I mean, of your own volition. Like, you know, I feel like yeah. people that do do things or whatever to try to take that little edge, uh, I, I understand the, the thought process behind it, you know, but at the end of the day, I feel like a clean win is always going to feel better. Very much so. Doing doing the things the right way is more important than uh, the end result. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love that. So on your best day then, right, if we were supposed to describe you, um, you know, on the air, if I'm working and I'm like, ah, Josh, is this that? Like on your best day, how do you want us to describe you? Like what's your fight style? Who Who's the guy that we're going to see on Josh's best day? On my best day, I'm a dedicated, disciplined martial artist. I, I fight in there. I fight with my heart, but you know, set emotion on the side. I'm not trying to fight with emotion or operate on there. Um, I do my best in all that I do, and martial arts is a way that I can express that. Also, it's a platform for me to give God the glory, to show His power, and inspire others to do their best as well. We all make mistakes uh, through the process, but these things are there to make us grow. To um, make us realize that um, you know that we have it, we have everything we need within us, and I believe that I have all the tools. I have all the tools capable of being the best and being my best. And uh, looking forward to bringing it, bringing it out of my opponent, bringing it out of myself. It's a great process, and the challenge is uh, the fight. But leading up to it, you you really get to know yourself and know what you're made of so looking forward for everybody to see that in the cage awesome yeah you do you learn you learn a lot about yourself uh that is for sure um has there been anybody um you know what we were obviously talking about Vanderlei, but has there been um any fighter or somebody that you've looked to and you've been like yeah man i like how that person's career has gone or um, I admire, you know, the path they took or the, or the way they sort of carried themselves. Not, not that you have any, you know, fighting idols or heroes, but is there anybody that you go, yeah, you know what, that, that's a pretty good way to, to, to go through this. Yeah, I believe I have a few, na a few names come to my mind. Um, some active fighters or fighters that were used to be active. Um, Cub Swanson, I always loved his style, his dynamic, um, you know, sporadic fighting as well as just unorthodox you know setting up his shots uh, he really mixed it together and became a great family man as a beautiful family and i'm glad that he's able to transition being from a fighter to to being a dad as well as a, a good example and role model in the martial arts um 
next would be, you know, Khalil Rontree. We came up in the same gym, started at the same gym, and I saw the, saw the su- success and the uh, inspiration that he transitioned from being a heavier set guy to really making his dreams come true by willpower and consistency. And, and I see him, I bump into him at the PI here and there, and I'm glad that he's getting su- the success that he deserves and that he worked toward. Um, those are the two UFC fighters. My coach has always been a great mentor, a great example to me. He, a former fighter himself, Michael Costa, he really lives the martial art lifestyle, the discipline, the work ethic, and uh, living out his philosophy. And I believe that's important, as well as preaching your philosophy and then sharing it. You have to live it on a daily basis. And he's taught me a lot through that process. And um, just being with me, with me, pushing me and bringing out the best in me. I appreciate him every day. Um, Vanderlei Silva for giving me the opportunity to uh, be part of his roots, be part of the spirit that he brought into the cage. I still see his highlights today and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm keeping the spirit going. I love it. I mean, look at those are all excellent examples and, uh, and excellent people to have in mind. So yeah, it's great. And I, I agree with you. I've known Khalil for a while. Obviously I know him a little differently than you, but I first met him like a while back when he was kind of training alongside with Anderson. And so for me, yeah, yeah to see him doing what he's doing and the, find the success that he is and to stay such a cool and humble person is, is great. Like I'm just happy for him. And don't get me started on the cup. Like, uh, I'll talk about Cub Swanson all day long. Like, come on, man. So, yeah, those are all all great to, to have in mind. And, look, I'm just excited for you to get in there and do your thing. It's a massive card. Uh, you're already, um, you know, know what you're doing in the UFC. So looking forward to seeing you uh, in action. And is there a, an ideal way you'd love to finish the fight? I know, like, some people want walk-off, like, knock off, knockout or anything like this, like, do you, do you have an ideal way you'd want to finish it? That's a, that's a good question. How, how I want, how I would like, how I would like to finish the fight would be just getting my hand raised, just being able to inspire people through the way I fight and not set on a certain way to win the fight, but just being able to inspire others through the energy I bring and give God the glory. That's, that's my main purpose. And if I can do that, um, the main thing is to be able to get out that message. So the win, the win allows me to do that. So that's what I'm focused on. Perfect. I love it. Uh, I'm excited to get to uh, to watch you back in action, and uh, that is on the prelims at UFC 298. So Josh, thank you so much for kicking back with me, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much, Karen. Nice to finally meet you, and uh, looking forward to the, the, the fight. <laughs> cool. See ya. Thank you, see ya.